Maddie, age 11. She drew Peach Fuzz and Small from our program last week. And Maddie, I really like how you made Peach Fuzz a little bit darker and Small's a little bit lighter, just like they are in real life. They don't look exactly the same. So what a phenomenal job. We love seeing your artwork and we hope we keep getting many more beautiful pieces in the days to come. Thanks so much, Maddie. Without further ado, everyone, here is our primary guest for the day, and her name is Sally. And Sally is a salmon-crested cockatoo or a Moluccan cockatoo. Sally, can we say hello? <laughs> Good girl. Um, so our theme for this week, we're going to be talking about, um, our, it's, it's called On the Brink or Back from the Brink. So what that means is we're going to be focusing on species in the wild that might not necessarily be doing well, so they might have a decline in population numbers, and we're going to uh, focus on what their status is, what their conservation status is, and kind of why um, we are seeing those decrease in population numbers. So we're going to focus a little bit on that first before we have Sally run around on the table and throw things off. You can see there's lots of toys on the table. Um, we'll, we'll have her play with those in just a little bit. So um, there's a site that we usually look at called the uh, IUCN Red List. And that basically is a comprehensive inventory that um, has all global conservation statuses of different biological species. And it kind of evaluates reasons behind why species might possibly go extinct, all right? And there's different levels, so you can be threatened or vulnerable or endangered, critically endangered, things like that. So Sally, being a salmon-crested cockatoo or a Moluccan cockatoo, she is listed under the IUCN Red List as vulnerable. And what that means is that her population number is decreasing. So uh, the two main reasons for why we're seeing that decrease in population numbers in the wild um, are due to the pet trade and deforestation. So these guys are losing their habitats due to logging or things such as that, um, as well as uh, the illegal pet trade. So these guys are being taken out of the wild as adults, as well as their eggs being taken out of the wild. Now there is some current action that is taking place that hopefully will uh, help with this problem. And basically what, happen uh, what is happening is that these guys do a really, really good job with breeding in captivity. And what that allows us to do is uh, we can breed them in human care and that helps to reduce uh, the pressure of bird traders, uh, bird trappers, sorry, um, trying to trap wild populations of these guys. So hopefully that will help these guys increase their population numbers in the wild. So all about Sally. Sally is the oldest animal that we have at Elmwood Park Zoo. She's 46 years old. These guys can live up to 95 years. That's a long time. Um, they can live as long as, if not longer, than a human being. Um, they are probably one of the most high maintenance animals there are. Um, if you take anything away from the lesson, please do not get these guys as pets. They are so much work. Um, Sally has bonded with me, which you think would be all so cute and nice. However, when I go on vacation or if I am gone for a couple of days, uh, my coworkers struggle sometimes to give her the attention um, that she needs specifically with a closer contact. They give her everything that they need via you know, food and enrichment. It's just that what happens with these guys is they form a really, really close bond um, with one or two particular people and then they kind of get frustrated or stressed or sad if that person leaves. So 90% um, of the time parrots end up in zoos is because they are surrendered pets. Whether their previous owner um, got too old to take care of them or they didn't want them anymore. So uh, that is how we got Sally. Sally used to be a pet. Um, she lived with someone who had a dog who really liked to play with squeaky toys, hence the <laughs> that was pathetic, Sally. <laughs> Hence the squeaky 
squeaky toy noise. <laughs> there we go. Um, looks like she wants to run around, so we're gonna have her run around on the table. Uh, speaking of enriching these guys, they um, destroy everything, everything. You have wooden furniture in your house, destroy it. You have nice carpet, it's getting pooped on. Um, they have a beak that can crack open coconuts. That means your fingers, not safe, not safe in their mouths. Um, she loves carrying up paper and cardboard. She loves throwing things off of the table. Um, so that's why I have some bowling pins here and some um, little dangling toys. She also really likes keys. These aren't real life keys. She likes my keys. And she usually likes to throw them on the ground. Um, you can see she's reaching with her left foot. So Sally is a lefty. Uh, so just like people, she can grab things um, with a more dominant foot. So she is a lefty. So I bet there's a couple of lefties out there who are just like Sally. Now, no, we wanna see her beautiful face. So we're gonna put this on the ground, but maybe she'll like to knock some things over on the table. So these guys need to be out of their cages um, for at least four hours a day. They need constant attention and love. <laughs> and they are very, very, very loud. These guys can mimic um, a volume that is synonymous to a 747 jet engine, which can cause permanent damage to the human eardrum. Uh, so they are not quiet. Of course, now she's not making any noise. Um, but they can get very, very, very loud. We have been told that it's uh, quite interesting that when people have met her who have worked with parrots before that she's as quiet as she is because usually Moluccan cockatoos or salmon crested cockatoos which is what she is uh scream non-stop so Moluccan or salmon crested cockatoos are native to the uh, Moluccan islands which are off of the coast of Australia um and Indonesia so all cockatoo species are from around that part of the world so they're all very very far away from here um in the wild again they eat things like coconuts and different types of fruits and sometimes flowers that are the same color as them um here at the zoo Sally of course being as picky as she is hates coconuts um but some of her favorite Snacks are grapes and cooked yam. Now she does not have that as her main part of her diet because that's a little too much sugar. Um, as you can see, she loves destroying things, but she does get a grain that is the primary source of the nutrients and minerals and vitamins that she needs. And then it is supplemented with different fruits and veggies and she gets a variety from our wonderful uh, commissary team every day. So she likes cantaloupe and honeydew, raspberries, blueberries, uh, peas, but they have to be steamed, yam, but it has to be steamed, and corn. Uh, she will tell you very quickly if she does not like certain food items because she very um, drastically and in an overwhelming matter will throw them out of her dish if they are not up to her standard. Uh, it's very, very dramatic. Um, but she does like a few um, fruits and veggies and grapes and cooked yam are two of her favorites. So after she um, finishes destroying this wonderful piece of brown paper, we'll see if maybe we can have her wave to you guys so that she can get a grape as a reward. Are you going to be mad if I take this away from you? <laughs> can we wave to our audience? She says, no, I want head scratches. I know that's very nice, but I want you to have this. Wave. Wave. <laughs> that was a little pathetic, but I'll give it to you. I'll give it to you. Um, so when you watch her eat this grape, she will eat all of the inside and she'll spit out the skin because skin is yucky. They have a specialized tongue. It kind of feels like an eraser um, and it helps them to tear things apart really, really easily. So some other snacks that she gets on occasion is treats are sunflower seeds. They're high in fat though, so we have to make sure that we don't give her too many. Um, she also sometimes likes other types of nuts like walnuts, uh, she likes to crack open the nut to get to um, the part that she can eat inside. Um, 
but she has this tongue that can take off the shells and the outer layer of the actual seed very, very, very quickly. Um, again, you can see that she's holding that grape with her left foot, and that is because she is left-footed. I did nummies? You haven't knocked anything over yet. I'm surprised. So sometimes she does get shy, but I promise you she also can get very, very loud. And what we call that is story time with Sally when she uh, spreads her wings out and decides to um, hurt our eardrums. You can grab that. Go ahead, grab it. No? Okay. Are you sure? <laughs> what if I give it to you? Okay, um, Sally does have the ability to talk. Um, however, she was only taught at a young age to say, hi, Sally. If she was taught at a younger age, she might have the ability uh, to have said a wider um, variety of words. Um, but hi, Sally is her go-to. And uh, she also makes noises, lots and lots of noises. Those noises include screaming, um, laughing maniacally. It's a little scary when she does it at nighttime and she turns her head upside down and laughs like a crazy bird. Um, she also whistles and she makes this muffled noise that we assume she got from um, the radios that we have at work. So when people talk over each other on the radios, it often gets muffled. When she gets really excited and if we're talking to each other and she's not part of the conversation, she wants to be involved. So she ends up making this weird muffled noise, which of course you're not doing right now. You're being so quiet. What if I stand over here and then you throw them on the ground? She also uh, likes other loud things that are loud like her. She likes throwing them. So in her enclosure, we give her lots of different things to play with. So whether that be cardboard or paper or um, things that she can destroy are definitely her favorite. Um, she also just likes to watch you clean up her mess so that she can make a mess again. So that's why she likes throwing things off of the table, kind of like a toddler, um, because she enjoys throwing things and watching you pick them back up. Are you going to eat those treats? You didn't work for those. Let's wave to the audience and then you can have this cookie on. Wave. Oh, that's pathetic. Let's try that again. <laughs> can we step up? Oh, that was good. Wave. Wave. Sally Bird. Wave. You want this? Wave. And you don't get the treat, and now you're making me look nice. You're making me look silly. Hi. I know. Uh, Sally cannot fly. Uh, that is because her wings are clipped. Uh, so if she gets scared, she could kind of soar off of this tea perch and then toward the ground, but she can't actually get that lift that Laura was talking about when we were talking about our birds of prey, right? That thrust and lift to get up like Marvin. Um, she has not very strong keel muscles because she... Um, has never really needed to fly, right? What if I give you a grape instead? You want this? Wait. Thank you, good girl. That's a good girl. All right, guys, so um, I think what we're gonna do now is we're gonna answer some of your questions. Um, so it looks like Paul wants to know what her favorite toy to play with. Amazing question, Paul. Her favorite thing is cardboard. So we have to be careful not to make houses with that cardboard so that we don't um, promote breeding behavior in her. So any type of female birds or reptiles gotta watch out for because they can lay eggs and those eggs can get stuck sometimes. So we have to make sure that we don't 
um, get her in the mood to uh, try and lay eggs and so we give her pieces of cardboard that she can tear apart and it's actually really good for her beak too uh, so that's why we give her different textured perching as well um, if we're looking for more of a toy answer I would definitely say keys she likes to throw keys she likes to run around with them she does something that we call the bulldozer where she uh, slams her beak on the ground and runs in a circle um, she likes to do that with keys in her mouth Owen and Tyler would like to know if she is nocturnal. She is not nocturnal. Great question. So she is active during the day. Just like us. Okay, that's a little close. <laughs> um, Mia would like to know where they live. So the species of Moluccan cockatoo live off of the coast of Indonesia. Um, so kind of in between Indonesia and Australia on islands called the Moluccan Islands. So cockatoo species all come from around that area of the world. Azalea, it's your, it's your seventh birthday today. Azalea, happy birthday. You get to share that with Sally. Um, how fantastic. Thank you so much for watching our live stream on your birthday. Connor would like to know what her favorite food is. So Sally's <laughs> favorite food um, are definitely grapes. That's her favorite snack. Um, she gets grain, again, as the main part of her diet. Uh, but grapes are definitely by far her favorite. Oh, so uh, for those of you who might have missed, Sally is a salmon crested cockatoo. She got her name before she came to the zoo, which is why she can sometimes say, hi, Sally. Hi, Sally. You blow kisses? That's nice. <laughs> and she is the oldest animal in the zoo. She's 46 years old, and they can live to be in their 90s. Keith would like to know how strong her beak is. Keith, so strong. Her beak can crack open coconuts in the wild. So, um, that means that your fingers are not safe from her doing some pretty hefty damage. Um, has she bitten people before? Yes, she has. Um, they unfortunately have some scars to prove that. Luckily, she hasn't bitten anyone in a very long time. We are trying to work with her to get her uh, to play around and work better for <laughs> more people than just me. Um, but that beak is very strong. So when we learned about Killian, for example, and Zeppelin, the screech owl, those guys being uh, raptors, they use their talons to protect themselves. Um, yeah, did that make a loud noise? Woohoo! <laughs> um, whereas parrots, they use their faces. Their beaks are much stronger than their feet. Um, excuse me. No, thank you. How about I take that off? Uh, Brianna and Joey would like to know how often does she sleep? Really good question. So these guys um, kind of sleep similar in length to people. Um, she'll take a nap, you know, in the day. Again, similar to people. Um, but yeah, they, they sleep a, a very, very similar to what a human would sleep. Jack would like to know if she has any family. Really good question, Jack. So thank you so much, Sally, for making a mess. <laughs> um, these guys, usually the trend for parrots is the bigger, or birds in general, usually is the bigger the bird, the less number of offspring they have. I know it's true. Um, so they will have maybe one or two babies. Um, so, Sally here most likely could have had maybe a sister or a brother, but uh, we, we don't have those family members at the zoo. Sally is the only cockatoo that, <laughs> that is at Elmwood Park Zoo. Julia and Carissa would like to know if she can say any words. Um, she can pretty much say two guys, hi and Sally. Can I make her say it? Nope, because Sally does what she wants, when she wants. Sally is her, her own person in bird form. So these guys have the intelligence level of about a two to a three-year-old. So she could have learned a lot more words had she been taught at a younger age, but since 
she was not taught at a younger age, she can really only say hi and her name. Um, but she makes a lot more noises. So she mimics some water noises where she used to live near some um, pipes that you could hear the water through. Uh, and she screams and laughs and whistles and blows kisses as well. Zachary would like to know when her birthday is. Zachary, what a good question. Are you clicker training yourself? Okay. Um, you know what, Zachary? Unfortunately, we don't know her specific birth date. We just know the year. So we know that she is 46 years old, um, but that's, that's as far information as we have. Michael would like to know how fast does Sally fly? Michael, uh, zero miles per hour. Sally can't fly. Um, these guys in the wild? Good question. I don't have an exact number for you, but speed is not um, something that they can withstand for long periods of time. Um, so uh, that's a really good question. You know what? I'm going to have to look up a number and see if I can find an actual number for you, okay? Lucas would like to know how big she is. Great question, Lucas. So Sally is just under two feet in length and she weighs just over a pound. So remember every time that we've learned about birds, we've mentioned the fact that um, most birds need to stay nice and light in order to fly. They do, yes, you are nice and light. You like that compliment? Yeah. Um, and they need to stay light in order to fly. They have those hollow bones and really, really soft and light feathers. Um, however, Sally in particular, as an individual, she cannot fly. Gregory, Gregory would like to know how big her wingspan is. Good question, Gregory. Um, actually, one thing that we uh, have been trying to train Sally with is letting me touch her wings so that we can trim her wings without her being restrained because getting restrained is stressful for everyone involved. Um, so let's see if she'll let me show you guys. Can we just show them your nice, beautiful wing? Oh, that was so good, so girl. That was great. So um, as a length of her wings, maybe, oh gosh, a total of two feet. It's, it's not very long, not very long. Jack would like to know why her head feathers pop up. Oh, Jack, you beat me to it. Fantastic question. So even though Sally doesn't say a lot of words, she can communicate to us very, very well with her feathers. So her feathers are connected to uh, her skin, which is connected to her muscles. So she uses her muscles to move those feathers around to kind of tell us how she's feeling. So when she's done this piece of cooked yam, um, I'll show you guys why she's called a salmon crested cockatoo. They have what's called a crest on top of their heads and um, those feathers are darker than the rest of the feathers. So she has this yellow tinted feathers underneath her wings and the rest of her is this light pink. She does not get that coloration from what she eats. She is born that way. <laughs> Can I see your face? That goes there? Okay, I'm sorry. I didn't know that. Um, but she can, again, tell us a lot about how she's feeling with those feathers. So after she throws that on the ground, very nice. That's exactly where that belongs. Can we show them your beautiful feathers? No. You want head spudgies? She says no. Okay. Well, when she says yes, we'll show you her feathers, but you can see on the back, there's some darker colors, which is why she's called a salmon crested cockatoo. And uh, Sally here will move the feathers around her face a lot. So if her crest is up and only her crest, that's an indication that she could be angry or excited. We usually know that she's excited and not angry when her wings come out and she bobs up and down and dances and is really, really noisy. That's usually how we know that she is excited and not angry. When her crest is up and the rest of her feathers look very skinny, um, that's a good indication that that's an angry bird and you would probably want to stay away from them. Um, so if her feathers go over her beak, that's a good indication that she's content and happy. Um, and then if she looks kind of quote unquote skinny and her feathers are really close to her body, that could mean that she's possibly scared. Victoria would like to know what are their predators? Their main predator are humans. 
Um, if there's, you know, other big carnivores or birds of prey could eat these guys in the wild, but humans are definitely their main predator. You cleaned it off the whole table, huh? Liam and Ronan would like to know, does she come from a jungle environment or desert or drier environment? Okay, wonderful question, guys. Going back to those habitats that we learned about, right? So these guys are a rainforest animal. So they like it hot, humid, and wet. That is definitely their favorite type of habitat. So we give her showers with uh, a water bottle and she loves those showers. All right, guys, it looks like we have time for three more questions. Eliza would like to know what color are her eyes? They kind of look a little demonic, don't they? They kind of look piercing black, but they're actually really, really dark. Jen would like to know if her eyesight is good. Uh, her eyesight is decent, not uh, nearly as good as a hawk's. Um, these guys aren't looking. I, these guys aren't looking um, for prey animals because they are herbivorous. They eat fruits and veggies. Um, but it's decent. It's de decent. Eli and Andrew would like to know how do you bathe her and how often? Great question. So we bathe her with a, a water bottle um, that you would use to, you know, water plants or spray down a surface. And um, she can get that as, as often as she would like, um, whether that be every day, every other day. Um, she doesn't particularly like me giving her showers, but Rebecca, who you saw at the beginning of the episode, she really likes to get showers from Rebecca, so I don't really know what to tell you. Can we show them your crest before we say goodbye? That's what we call the bulldozer. Can we show them your crest? Don't go. No, okay, that's fine. Let's say bye then, huh? Can we step up? You gonna shake first? Ooh, there you go. All right, guys, well, it looks like that's all the time that we have for today. Thank you guys so much for joining uh, Sally and myself. <laughs> it's a good girl. Yeah, it is a good girl. Um, if you guys are interested in helping the zoo, um, you can, of course, donate to Emergency Fund. There's also a new feature on Facebook that uh, are called stars, and you can purchase these stars. So it's similar to the thumbs up or heart icon, um, except... Facebook actually gives the zoo um, a portion of that profit. So if you guys are interested, you can buy us stars if you really, really like our programs, all right? So um, thank you guys for tuning in. We look forward to you guys uh, tuning in tomorrow. And uh, from me and Sally, have a great rest of your day, okay? Hi. <laughs>